Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 28th of June. We're at the end of Microsoft's financial year. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. And the videos this week, I just did one because it was a massive amount of research and work. I dived into credential and token theft. And this isn't a how-to, it's what you can do as an organization to understand what those attack vectors are and then what are the actions you can do to attempt to mitigate and maximize the protection you have for your organization. So it goes through quite a lot of detail and it builds on from credential theft through to the tokens and all of those different things you can do. So hopefully that's useful. On to the what's new on the compute side. So continuous performance diagnostics for Windows VMs, only Windows is now in preview. So this builds on the existing on-demand performance diagnostics for both Linux and Windows Azure VMs, where you can go and say, hey, for this duration, monitor the performance and it spits out a report. Instead, what this does is every five seconds, it's looking at what the performance is, then every five minutes, it dumps it out to a storage account. Now, it's not outputting any kind of report at the end of this. It's just gonna keep doing this until you go and stop it. But what's really good is about that granularity, and I can continually see it, if I'm trying to troubleshoot some kind of high resource usage, think CPU, memory, disk, this would be really good to be able to get insight into that very rapidly and help troubleshoot. For Linux VMs, we can now use ED25519 SSH keys. So what these keys do is it's better security with higher performance. What I can do is we're used to the idea of RSA keys, and that's obviously still a much more widespread standard, but with the ED25519 SSH key, I can use a much smaller key because it's based on elliptic curve cryptography, ECC, and it's a twisted Edwards curve. And what that means to you is a 256-bit ED key is equivalent in strength to a 3072-bit RSA key. Now, if I care about maximum compatibility and widespread support, you're probably gonna stick with the RSA. But if I wanna prioritize the security, the performance, then you may wanna consider this as it's now supported in preview. On the networking side, so now the regional web application firewalls, so that's what's available for App Gateway as the add-on, which is that layer seven. Now we have a JavaScript challenge available. And this is all about defeating bots. So what this JavaScript challenge does is the web client that is interacting with the service will get a Microsoft JavaScript challenge. Now the user doesn't have to do anything. All they'll see on the browser is there'll be like a one moment we're checking you're not a bot. And it's basically creating a JavaScript challenge that the browser has to successfully compute to get validated and be able to go through. So it helps it identify legitimate users from the bots who would fail the challenge. It's part of the bot management 1.x rule set and your custom rules, and it'll work on Edge, Chrome, Firefox, Safari web browsers. So that is now available in preview. The Azure Load Balancer now has cross-subscription support in preview. So what this would let me do is think about the Azure Load Balancer resource lives in one subscription, and what I could now have is the front end could be in a completely different subscription. I could have different front ends in different subscription and or the back end could be in different subscription. So it helps me split up the components to give me more flexibility for that overall uh, load balancer architecture. And that works in the Azure public regions, China and Gov cloud regions. ExpressRoute has some resiliency updates. Now, when we think of ExpressRoute, remember we always get those active-active connections. So we buy one circuit or direct where we get one set of ports, but it's always a pair. I get two connections, I get two ports, and they're active-active, so that gives us resiliency. But normally, those connections, those ports are in the same peering location within the geographic area, the metro you select. And as we saw actually last year in some of the bad storms, if that peering location has a problem, 
Well, both those connections are going to the same physical facility. They're both unavailable. So that's your standard resilience. Then they've got Express Route Metro. With Express Route Metro, you still have those two active active connections, but now they go to two different physical facilities in the same metro area, so the same city. But now I have resiliency from a physical building level failure. Just like we use availability zones in Azure in a region, that's kind of an equivalent thing. My two connections now go to two different data centers within the metro. And then you can do maximum resilience, which is where I actually have two different circuits to two completely different peering points that could be in different cities. So that's the maximum resiliency. And what's happening now, we have those three levels, the, the standard, the high, and the maximum. The SLAs are changing from October 1st, 2024. So now for a single circuit, just going to the same meet me, it's a 99% SLA. Express Route Metro goes to 99.9%, .9%, so three nines. And if I use the multi-home, so two circuits going to two peering points in different cities, well, then I get a 99.95% SLA. And also don't forget about your gateways. If you do have just a regular regional gateway, you can now move to a zone redundant where the instances that make up the gateway are spread over the AZs in the region very, very simply. I just need to make sure my gateway subnet's big enough to support the two gateways during the migration, but it's a very simple migration path now. Azure Content Delivery Network Standard now has a zero downtime migration to Azure Front Door. Obviously, Azure Front Door is the way forward. It includes the capabilities we think of as a CDN like caching. Then Azure Front Door adds things like split TCP, Anycast IP. It does a huge amount of fantastic capabilities all throughout the world. And in just a few steps and in a couple of minutes, I can move from the Azure CDN to Azure Front Door with basically zero downtime. And now if I'm using Azure Virtual WAN, that managed uh, hub networking, we can deploy the Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, the FTD, into that Virtual WAN instance, which will then give you those next generation firewall capabilities from Cisco. And that's both north-south traffic, so in and out the VNet, east-west between, and then internet bound traffic as well. From the storage side, so if I'm using Elastic SAN, remember Elastic SAN is that fully managed iSCSI target that's built on the native storage blocks of Azure. Uh, things like Azure Container Storage, um, Azure VMware Solution can all leverage these iSCSI targets. What I can now do is I can integrate with Azure Backup to give me these crash consistent backups of the Elastic SAN volumes. It goes and backs them up to zone redundant storage managed disks as an incremental snapshot. So that is now available. Then miscellaneous. So they have released in preview an Entra PowerShell module. Now obviously this is built on the Microsoft Graph API. They deprecated the previous Azure AD PowerShell modules because now we have Microsoft Graph. We can do everything with Microsoft Graph. It's all available. But what they've seen is for more scenario-based interactions, something more dedicated to entry would be beneficial to users, which is what this is. It still builds on the Microsoft Graph. I can still use it together with the Microsoft Graph PowerShell, but it's very much focused on specific scenarios. And it has an enable entry Azure AD alias command lip, which will then give it fantastic compatibility with the deprecated PowerShell module. I think it's like saying like 98% compatibility to give you a little bit more time as you're moving from that deprecated PowerShell module to um, this new entry specific PowerShell module. On artificial intelligence side, and I probably should just create a new category for this. For the Azure Machine Learning, when I'm using the managed online endpoints, we can now use Entra ID integrated authentication for that. So it's only for the managed online endpoints, but now, hey, I can take my Entra account, I can use role-based access control on the resource, which means I could hook into things like service principles and managed identities to perform that authentication through there. There's now guided training job submission experience in the portal. 
Now I can create new training jobs using the CLI, the REST API, the user interface, and what this does, it gives me a complete guided experience of everything I need to get that training job um, submitted for whatever my customized uh, machine learning model needs to do. And then also when I'm using prompt flow, well those compute sessions we require to run our prompt flow, I can now use Azure AI Studio to actually create and manage those prompt flow compute sessions. So it's just really making it all easier from a, a management capability, I can all use the UI. Then in preview, there's now an Azure AI model inference API. So what does that mean? There are a large number of foundational models. And a foundational model means it's generally trained on a broad set of data. I can use it for a broad set of functions. And then generally we build a specialized model on top of those, or maybe I just interact with that foundational model directly. But there's a huge number of different developers creating these foundational models. We can think obviously there's Microsoft, there's OpenAI, um, there's Meta, the list kind of goes on. And today there's not really just a standard way for me writing my application that works against all those different models. So I would have to modify my code based on the specific model I want to talk to. So what this inference API does, it provides a uniform way for me to interact. So it's gonna work with the Azure OpenAI models, um, Meta Llama 2 Chat, Llama 3 Instruct, Mistral Small, Mistral Large, um, the Microsoft Fire 3 family, the Cohurst Command R family, and the Cohurst Embed V3 family. And today what I can do with the inference API is when I'm talking to that, I can do both a text chat completion, so I can do a text or a chat completion. I can do a text or image embedding, so I give it the data, I get that multi high dimensional vector back that represents that semantic meaning. And I can also query it for information about the deploy models on the endpoint. So once again, the whole goal of this is as the developer, I don't have to change my code if I was switching between those different models. And that's it. Um, pretty nice selection of updates this week. As always, I hope that was useful. Until the next video, take care.